Seabirds are more threatened than any other comparable group of birds and have deteriorated faster in recent decades, creating an urgent need to better understand the ecology of seabirds in the marine environment. Whilst tracking helps us to understand seabird distribution in broad terms, we know that not all individuals in a population are going to behave in the same way. As we know, it is important to maintain diversity in populations, particularly threatened ones, so by not considering interpopulation variation in at-sea distributions, we may be neglecting to protect biodiversity. To assess the level of variation in the foraging distribution of round island petrels, we used a bespoke Bayesian mixtures analysis to assign petrels into different groups based on their distribution patterns at sea. Round island petrels are a good model of system for studying interpopulation variation, as they exist in a compound hybrid swarm of three species of pterodroma petrel and breed asynchronously on round island. They are therefore expected to show between individual variations in their distribution patterns. 219 geolocators were deployed on plastic tassel rings onto petrels at their breeding colony on Round Island, situated 22.5 kilometres off Mauritius in the southwestern Indian Ocean. Of these, 95 returned with one or more track time periods at Round Island that exceeded 60 days in length. Only tracked periods of over 60 days were considered for analysis, as we only wanted to consider petrels that were likely to be based at the island, as opposed to just stopping off. Circular distributions were divided into three time periods that represented comparable stages of the petrel's annual cycle. The full season, from a petrel's return from migration to its final departure from the island. The early round island season, defined as the first 60 days after they return from migration. And the late season, the last 60 days before a petrel departs on migration. We then used a Bayesian mixtures analysis to quantify the level of intrapopulation variation in distribution patterns within these three periods of the petrel's annual cycle. To do this, the ocean was divided into regions based on seafloor topography, and locations from each petrel were counted in these regions. These data were then used in the mixtures analysis, which calculates the optimal number of groups, known as mixtures, that is appropriate to represent the variability in the data. It then assigns petrels to mixtures based on similarities and differences in distributions of the locations within and between groups. If no variation had been detectable in the data, the number of mixtures in each time period would have been 1. However, the mixtures analysis found 5 mixtures in the full season distributions, 14 in the early season and 13 in the late. Although there were more mixtures in the early season, over a third of all petrels included in this time period were assigned to the same group and therefore can be inferred as distributing in a similar way around Round Island. In contrast, each of the largest groups in the late season included just a tenth of the total petrels in the analysis. From these analyses, we can clearly see that Round Island petrels vary in their foraging distributions around Round Island, in a way we couldn't have seen if looking at the data as a whole. We can also infer that petrels are less varied in their distribution patterns during the early season, this may be because petrels early in their time at Round Island are more likely to be at a similar stage of their annual cycle than those later on, and late season petrels are less likely to be constrained in their foraging distributions by demands at the nest. This study demonstrates a simple way to quantify intrapopulation variability in large scale distribution patterns. Little is known about the intrapopulation distribution plasticity in tropical seabirds, and ideally this variation should be taken into account when designating areas for marine protection. The Western Indian Ocean is a hot spot for marine biodiversity, but despite this, less than 1% is included within a marine protected area, and therefore identifying ecologically valuable areas is a priority.